Welcome in to this Thursday edition of the flagship. I am your host, Zach Barry. Joining me a couple days later than he normally does, Mr. David Brandt, Associated Press. Uh, before we welcome him in, remind everybody, the show is brought to you each and every day by our friends at College Corner, Oxford, Ridgeland, Flowood, three locations. You can also check them out, collegecornerstore.com. Get in to uh, one of those three or check them out online for all of your Ole Miss merch needs. If you need to uh, maybe get you some new polos for college football season, maybe some tailgating supplies, a gift, whatever it might be, College Corner has you covered. Scott and the folks take care of us as they are our title sponsor and they will take care of you. David, good morning. I know that uh, we are couple days removed from almost baseball season being ended but uh but welcome in how are you i'm i'm doing well i do best i i saw one of the most rare things in the history of baseball and that was a clear weather week in hoover oh yeah um, basically i i saw somebody showed the forecast and i was like i don't know if that's ever happened before it, you, you know, I, hopefully you didn't jinx. Well, I guess, you know, who cares if you jinx it now? <laughs> uh, but yeah, there's usually always a weather delay at some point during the SEC tournament. Um, Ole Miss, if you did not see it, uh, lost two to one on a walk-off home run. Um, I, David, I was watching it and, and I told myself after the leadoff walk, I was like, it's coming. Right. And you get a pass ball, moves the runner up. Then you get a hit and run, a rare second to third hit and run by Mississippi State. Um, Will Furness makes a phenomenal play, snags it, gets the out. Then, I mean, just a an electric battle between Liam Doyle and Dakota Jordan, Mississippi State's best player, K's him on heat. And I told myself, Mike Bianco is going to be lulled into this false sense of security that Liam Doyle, oh, he's throwing 95, we're good. And I was like, he is going to throw a first pitch fastball. And Connor Cusack is going to be sitting dead red, and he didn't miss it. Um, Walk off to run homer. Uh, Honestly, aside from the year, which was bad, we'll get into that. Just a complete, uh, just spoiling Riley Maddox's performance. Uh, he was phenomenal. Um, struck out seven, almost went eight complete. Um, career best in strikeouts. I think he only had one walk, maybe. Um, but it was a pitcher's duel the whole game. And it was good baseball. Just completely wasted that. Um <laughs> Before I throw it to you, let's get into the numbers. So almost finished 27 and 29 this year, 11 and 20 in SEC play, uh, including the loss uh, Tuesday, lost the last six games of the year. That just... Yeah, that's a, that's a tough one because for a minute there, it looked like they were, you know, I mean, obviously they've had issues all year, but it looked like they were kind of turning it around when it mattered and it just, yeah. It just collapsed out of the stretch. Win the series against Mississippi State, win the series against Auburn, win the series against then top 10 Texas A&M. Right. You lose the Sunday game against A&M, then you lose to Southern Miss, and then you get swept by LSU, and then you lose to Mississippi State and Hoover. Um, just completely – I don't want to say all goodwill from the national title is gone. Can't take it away. Got it done. No matter how it happened, Ole Miss has a national championship. They have a trophy in a case at the stadium. You got the banner on the wall in the outfield. That's there to stay. But, I mean, last year, 25 and 29 and 6 and 24 in the SEC, then you think, oh, Ole Miss is going to hit the portal. They get some big names. I people can correct me if I'm wrong here on the message board or let me know wherever. I think maybe one hit from the portal. That was Andrew Fisher who had 20 home runs this year for Ole Miss. Um, You can make a case for maybe, I guess you could say Liam Doyle. He had some, some high marks this year. 
was really good on the weekend here and there, but I mean, just a bad, 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 bad year. Now, what are you going to do? You give him the extension after the title and the buyout, I think is north of 10 million to buy out Mike Bianco and all the assistants. I, what, what do you think Keith Carter, what do you think is going through his mind right now weighing all the options? I mean, I, I, I'm sure he's a little frustrated. I'm sure he's, I, I just don't think there's much other option at least right this minute than just to kind of wait it out. You know what I mean? I, I don't think, like you said, the goodwill from the world series. Um, I think you got to stick with Bianco a couple more years. Um, unless it is a weird spot, but I think that World Series bought him a couple more years. So I, I think you kind of bet that they can turn it around. And I wouldn't totally bet it. You know, the trend lines aren't great right now. That's the thing. I mean, yes, they won the title in 2022, but that was just a decent season until the very end. And of course, you know, like you said, they got it done. It happened. You know, it doesn't matter how it happened. In fact, I was, you know, you talk about how much, uh, you know, that World Series meant and everything. I was sitting in a bar in Gilbert, Arizona yes, yesterday. I'm not making this up. And the uh, ESPNU was playing the the title, you know, whatever, Ole Miss, may, whatever that 30 for 30 or whatever it is. I don't know. But oh, yeah, uh, that that Ole Miss show of them winning the championship. I mean, it was incredible. Oh, season, yeah. Were, yeah, yeah, it was incredible publicity for the for the program, I, I think. And it's just kind of confounding that, you know, you, you expect some level of regression that's just going to happen. But two years in a row, it, especially on top of, again, that, that College World Series season wasn't great until the very end. I, the trend lines aren't going the right way. But you asked about, you know, Keith Carter. I, I just think at this point, you stand pat at least one more year and, and kind of see where this takes you. I think that's what's going to happen. If you made me, if you made me pick a side right now, I would say he gets one more year um, because of not only the money. Um, it's a lot of money. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's a lot of money, but I, I don't think that's the biggest factor at this point. I mean, if, if they wanted to make a change, they could make a change. Um, but I, I, yeah, like I, at a certain point, it's not just monopoly money or fun coupons. Like it's a lot, but I do think that it's an sec program. You could find a way. Right. Maybe, and maybe that's what they do. I, a lot of it also depends on what other schools are doing. You know, there's rumors about other sec jobs opening up. Do you want to be, in an arms race with other programs in a coaching search season. Do you, right. have you done your, have you done some work behind the scenes? Because look, it's not like this was a shock on Tuesday that, Oh, no, oh, this is not making the, t no, they, <laughs> they knew this about was a this. Flawed baseball team. We knew that a long time ago. So part of me thinks he gets one more. I, I think we're looking at if, Memory serves. Let me find it here. I believe right now, four years left on a six-year agreement. I got the you know signed the extension after the national championship. Um, so it's somewhere. It's not just the buyout. It's what you would have to have to hire a good coach as well. Now I agree with that. The the ten million by itself doesn't bother me as much, but then you'd have to shell out a lot of money to get the kind of coach you want to get. Yeah, because Bianco is around one point six and change, salary wise, and then I, I think uh, talking with folks the last couple of days, I think it's a, over five million paid out over four years for the buyout, and then you know, taxes and then the staff, everything else. So it's close to 10 million. Um, my only fear for the program is if you keep, if you keep Mike Bianco on, what happens if you have another year like this? Cause I, I think right now, just a pulse check on the fan base. I think a lot of people are ready to move on. And now, and, and again, this isn't a shock. 
it isn't like the selection committee snubbed on this. Like everybody knew late March, early April, that this was probably not going to happen. I think that that like complacency and, and even just like apathy is far worse than anger when it comes to a program. I, I mean, I agree. And they're in a tough spot. I just keep coming back to Mike Bianco has a quarter century of history with this program. And, and the thing I liked about him the most up before, you know, because always the knock on him was he couldn't get to the College World Series. And then it was he couldn't win the College World Series. But but the thing that I was always most impressed with is that program for the better part of more than 20 years never bottomed out, especially like it did last year, the 6-24. and 24. You know, he yeah. always, he always went, even if he had kind of a flawed roster, they'd go 14-16 and 16 in the league or 16-14 and 14 or 15 and 15. And then some years they'd jump up and be more like 20 and 10 or 19 and 11. And I always thought that was Mike Bianco's best quality is that he always got, sure, you know, something out of the team, even if it was flawed. And even if all those super regionals were painful, they were always in the mix. And so I just, maybe he's lost that magic. Maybe that happened. I don't know. But, you know, I, I think 2020 was shaping up to be a great year before the pandemic. 2021 was a good season. 2022, obviously, they won a title. The last two years have been tough. I mean, there's no question. And I agree with you all the, the things you said about fan apathy. And, you know, sometimes you just get tired of seeing the same guy's face for a quarter century. And I think, you know, I, I think part of the fan base is, is there with Bianco. But, I mean, unless he wants to move on, I just, if, if you're Keith Carter, I just think there's too much. You know, you talk about the buyout his history, I, I just, I think he gets at least one more year. I do too. Um, and another thing that's just been kind of weird to see just throughout his career at Ole Miss, the rosters always looked like they belonged. Right. Always, always had SEC looking players. This was the last couple years, uh, even the 2022 team, there were some guys out there that looked like they didn't belong. They, they, they and they, and they probably don't. It's I, they, like I, talking with our, our friends Ben Woodhouse and and Nicholas Carr earlier this morning, and uh, our guy Austin Gray. We were kind of just hashing it out and talking about it. And you know, Nick made a point where he was like, every year Ole Miss had some guy in the bullpen or on the weekend that was six five two thirty pitching. <laughs> right. Like every year it was like defensive ends out there. Um, and it, it just, the lineup looked different. Um, I thought that the portal on paper, the portal additions on paper looked good, but you, you know, you get a guy in, in Trace and Hughes that was really good at Mercer and then he struggles in the SEC. And then Andrew Fisher was lights out at Duke. Now he still hit 20 home runs, but he struggled in the field. He was moved to DH. Um, you know, Jackson Ross really mashed at FAU, was really hot and cold at Ole Miss. So it's not only just the lineup is different, the look is different, the feel is different, but it, seem, it seems like there's a drop-off in development and evaluations now. Yeah, that I mean, that's the one thing that's changed. You think of, like, what changed from 2020, 2021, and that's, you know, NIL and it's it's transfers and it's you you just build programs differently and I don't you know I'm not I'm not qualified the, the ins and the outs of of building a program I'm sure it's different and I I I know Mike Bianco's coached a lot of baseball but something's not working right now like you said and I don't know the good news is because of the portal it can be fixed fairly quickly if you make the right moves but yeah, he's he's running out of time, and and I agree that the the development, I, sometimes the portal gives you almost too many choices. Um, yeah, and and I think that I, I think teams are going to be careful about dipping into that mid major pool because you're right, you know, some guys the talent transfers really well, and sometimes it doesn't when you're facing SEC competition for thirty games a year. It's just different than if you're at an FAU or a Mercer. Nothing against those programs because they can jump up and beat anybody on a good day but um mm -hmm. it's it's just different it's you know you're you're facing 
you know, single A, double A caliber pitching pretty much every day in the SEC. And, and I don't know if that's the case. So, like I said, building a team has really changed in the last two or three years. And that's really about the only thing that gives me pause with Mike Bianco. But again, he's he's done it for a long time. I, I wouldn't totally bet against him. So, mm-hmm. and he hears what we're saying. <laughs> it, it, he's yeah. going to be motivated. Right. Um, and I think the... I like I I know like that there was a you know kind of a hype video that was released you know before the season started where you know Reagan Burford is walking around the square and you know the quote was the standard hasn't changed but we have um you know kind of like hey last year really sucked but this year's <laughs> you know, we're, we're back uh and 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 they you know narrator you know they weren't right uh, you know, I'll say this, um, you know, a colleague, you know, a, a, a friend of the program and friend in the in the space of Ole Miss media and, and journalism, Chase Parham, who's around the program probably more than anyone, knows sure. baseball more than anyone at Ole Miss, you know, tight with Bianco. Uh, he had a really interesting column, basically kind of in his opinion, Ole Miss has a problem, but it's not the portal. And basically the premise of his column was it's Ole Miss doesn't have it. His quote was Ole Miss doesn't have a portal problem. It has a problem because it needs the portal so much. Um, and I think that's, <clears throat> there, there, there's definitely credence to that. I think that's true because, it, you know, looking at how to build a roster <clears throat> in baseball specifically and how, you know, you need those one year guys or the the two year guys from the portal, but you also need to develop and you need to recruit. And, you know, baseball is a different animal because every year the recruiting classes are great. I mean, Mike Bianco has recruited anywhere from number one overall class, the top five, the top 10, the top 15. There's always talent that is signed to Ole Miss. But as you know, with the MLB draft, you know, there's at least two to three, sometimes four or five that don't make it. Um, so, you know, it's it's kind of a weird, this this whole dichotomy of like recruiting college baseball where it's like, hey, we found this kid when he was 14 and we think he's going to be great. And then by the time he's 18, you know, 17, 18, well, shit, he's throwing 96 from the left <laughs> side. We're not going to get him. Like it's you tough. want him to be, you want him to be good, but not too good. Yeah. You know, is is almost the, you know, you don't, like, That's really what it to, is to, to get those first round talent guys. But when they get drafted in the first round, most of the time they go. So yeah, yeah. It, it always has been, but that, you know, that, that is tough in baseball, but that hasn't changed. You know what I mean? Like Mike Bianco sure. knows about that. So I, I don't, it is interesting because you would like to build a program like you talked about where you're developing within and then you get a couple transfers to fill out the roster. Not unlike, you know, in major league baseball, you want to develop your own, you know, from a diamondbacks perspective, for instance, because I'm in Phoenix, you want to develop your Corbin Carroll's, your Brandon Fox and stuff like that. And then you supplement with a couple of bats here and there, or a couple relief pitchers and stuff like that. But, you right. know, like when the Yankees were going amazing, you know, all those guys were homegrown, Derek Jeter, Mira, Mariano Rivera, and then they supplemented it. And it's the, you know, I, I think that's the same thing that you want to get to, because you're right. If you're totally, you know, switching out rosters in the portal, yeah, you might hit, it could happen, but that's a tough way to live year in and year out. And, and maybe they have, relied too much on the portal lately because they've had to, but it's, it's just, it has been, and then there's always that thing has Mike and, or, you know, that whole staff just kind of lost its edge after the, the, the title. And I I know that's kind of, you know, cliche and stuff like that, but something's going on there. And I don't think it's that Mike Bianco just forgot how to coach baseball. I, I don't know. 
The College Corner is headed to Oxford. Stop by their new location in the Oxford Commons off Sisk Avenue. They'll have 4,000 square feet of Rebel gear ready for your trip to the Grove. On your next trip to Oxford, stop by the College Corner or our other great locations in Ridgeland and Flowood. Hats, shirts, polos, pullovers, sweats, T-shirts. College Corner has it all. And as always, you can visit us online at collegecornerstore.com. That's collegecornerstore.com. The College Corner, where your game day apparel meets. Call Drew Moak of USA Benefits Group. He can help you with any of your health insurance needs. Drew is an Ole Miss grad located in Mississippi and licensed in seven states. He works with the nation's second largest health insurance brokerage with access to 35 different carriers, regular health plans, to life insurance, to dental and vision, and even Medicare. He has it all covered. Now more than ever, it is critical to have a health insurance agent who is local and accessible. So call Drew Moak at 601-953-8449. 601-953-8449 and get your free quote today. Yeah, and, and you look at kind of the recent teams where, you know, the the 2014 team, you know, you mentioned edge, like that team had an edge. They had some some older guys, some leaders, they had some young talent, they got hot in the postseason got to, you know, finally broke through the ceiling, got to Omaha, finished third overall that year. Um, And then, you know, later you've got some guys that don't go in the draft. You know, Ryan Rollison chooses to go to school. Gunnar Hoagland turns down first round money. That never, you know, that hardly ever happens. Right. And then you get, you know, a couple, (laughs) you know, a generational class of kids from Oxford high school that go to Ole Miss, Um, you know, all of that happens where it just worked out perfectly. And then, you know, Tim Elko, you know, what, 24, 25 year old Tim Elko, you know, basically <laughs> you know, galvanizes the team and puts the, the, the town on his back. And then everything just clicked at the right time. Um, so I, I, yeah, I mean, Mike Bianco hasn't forgotten how to coach. It's not like he's all of a sudden, you know, well, what do I do here? I think it's just a combination of the roster is not very good. Some guys that they thought were going to be good were not. And then also the elephant in the room, you play in the SEC and everybody else is really damn good. Right. I mean, it doesn't take much slippage and suddenly you're 11 and 19 in the conference. I mean, I the what at least there was, you know, I, I know it's faint praise, but there was some – the marginal improvement this year. At least they were, you know, competitive down the stretch and we were, you know, thinking about possible NCAA tournament and stuff like that. So I, I don't think it's 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 totally far off. Another thing that I was thinking, you know, this this program before 2022, I you talked about those teams with an edge. Like it was a program with an identity and it was a, kind of a frustrating identity, but Ole Miss was almost like the Chicago Cub or the Boston Red Sox of college baseball you know the the really good program with incredible fan support that had never won a title and you know you you had that streak going and there was almost this magical quality with chasing that and then once you get there you know it, it's like the dog that finally caught the car it's like well what do we do now you know you like the Cubs yeah. won the title in 2016 and then they had a drop off the next couple of years and I I think you know, maybe Ole Miss is just going through that, trying to find itself as a, as a program right now. It's it's just difficult. I remember even 15 years ago, you know, Georgia made the title game and lost to Fresno State. I believe Dave Perno was the coach. And, you know, two or three years later, he's gone because the same type of thing happened. And it looked like Georgia was set up to be a monster for, you know, at least the next five to 10 yeah. years. So it can it can change in a hurry. And so, I you know, like I said, I, I think Mike Bianco, with what he's done for the program, with what he's – I'm not going to say he put them on the map because I think Ole Miss baseball was growing even before he came. But the program is synonymous at this point with Mike Bianco, for, for better or for worse. And so right. I I just think, you know, you, you asked at the very beginning what Keith Carter thinks he should do. I, I Like I said, I, I think at this point this is one where you, you just kind of stand pat. You have your post postseason meeting with Mike. You say, what do we need to do to make this better? And you you try it one more year, and, you know, if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. But I, I think that's your best option at this point. 
Yeah, there was a stadium expansion that was planned. I know that that's been put on hold. I'm fairly certain. Um, it just, I, I think that's pretty telling, right? Is, hey, hold off on spending this much money. I think it's thirty million, right? Because uh, we might need it. Um, <laughs> what are they? Uh, what are they adding in that expansion? I, I saw the, but I didn't like go into detail with it because I like how many more seats can you add? So, or is it just like luxury boxes and stuff like that? So yeah, so I pulled up. So it would add approximately four hundred and fifty premium seats. Um, they were wanting it to be started um, after this season, uh, but that's now no longer. Um, so it was going to be in place for the twenty twenty six year. Um, so. Yeah, main grandstand canopy would extend to the end of the new club section, uh, providing pretty much everybody shade along the third baseline. Um, below the club would be upgraded concessions, restrooms, and then the new club section. Um, above it will covered concourse area for that. Um, I just, I just think that money could be spent elsewhere which, you know, hey, NIL. Um, <laughs> I was about to say, it's not like you look at old Mrs. Stadium right now and you're like, wow, this needs updated. Yeah. Still pretty nice. Yeah, I know that they're going to do a Champions Plaza, which, yeah, do that. National Championship, do a Champions Plaza to honor that team and, and honor that staff, Mike Bianco, whatever. I, I'm cool with that. That's not – I don't think that's $30 million. Um, I just – First of all, I, I think the long-awaited project that, that I've been waiting for them to announce is moving left field and right field closer to the, to the field. Like, I don't know when the last time you were at Swayze Field was, but I'm sure you remember, like, everybody's way back. Yeah, there is, like, a there's a separation between, I know in yeah. right field, at least, last time I was out there. So, yeah, I mean, I think moving it closer, I mean, that more intimate experience for the fan – it would be more of a, you know, a home field advantage out in right field. I mean, left field too, like that, you know, those people are out there, they get pretty rowdy. They want to be loud. I think moving it closer. I mean, you look at everywhere else around the SEC, if they have seating in the outfield, it's on the, it's on the fence. Right. Um, and that would be way cheaper. I don't think that would be $30 million. Um, I hope not. Uh, yeah. So I just, I wonder another concern for me, is, you know, baseball kind of helps Oxford, the community, bridge the gap between football season. And it it's no a question. huge, a huge part of the economy. People come every weekend for home series. It's a big deal. Um, I'm not, I'm not ready to say that people will just not go to games next year. I mean, people will still go, but I mean, attendance, I don't have the numbers in front of me, but just the eye test on, on TV, I mean, it, did not look great. Um, and I know Ole Miss prides itself on, on attendance numbers and being one of the better environments. And, and that's a brand. That's that. I think that's the big thing for me, right? Is Ole Miss years ago planted the flag. Like, we are going to be a brand in baseball. We are that gonna is be true. Nationally, we're going to be nationally known. Is Keith Carter going to allow it? three, maybe four years in a row where you don't make the tournament, you're not good. Uh, that's my thing is like if apathy sets in with the fan base, that's what's brutal. No, I mean, you make good points. I can't argue with any of those. I I just think there's one more year to try to make it happen. And, you know, like in, in a lot of different situations, I think that a change would be made if this wasn't, you know, a coach who had been there 25 years and won a title a couple of years ago. But I, I just think you're in a spot. Is there any, you know, how old is Mike Bianco right now? He's about 60. I mean, I know he's not like retirement age necessarily, but. I say he's late 50s. He is 57. 57. So he's young not man. Old. Right, exactly. Is, is there a way, and I don't know if he'd want to do this, you know, to transition into kind of a Skip Bertman type thing, you know, where obviously the the head job is not available as far as athletic director. But could well, you move Mike Bianco into the front office a little bit, you know, like 
Is there I mean, something that could be done? Maybe he would like to do that. I don't know. That um, would make a lot of sense. I mean, they already honored Skip Bertman at an Ole Miss game. Right. <laughs> which I thought was weird, but, you know. That's right. Just, um, that was like that time they put Tommy Tuberville on the big screen. You remember that? That went over like a lead balloon. I, I appreciated what they were trying to do with that. It was kind of funny, I thought, but it didn't go over very well. Yeah, there was a little bit of lack of awareness uh, for those two. <laughs> yeah. Just, what are you doing? Um, and look, it, last thing here, and this might be, well, duh. Um, and look, I'll say this real quick before we get into kind of my last point. Um you know, hey, speaking of saving money, uh, if you're looking to save anywhere from 20 to 30 percent on your health insurance premiums, uh, you can holler at Drew Moak of USA Benefits Group, 601-953-8449. He's in Mississippi. He's an Ole Miss grad, but he's also licensed in seven states. So even if you're not in the Magnolia State, he can still help you out. He works with the nation's second largest health insurance brokerage and has access to 35 different carriers. So Regular health plans, life insurance, dental, vision, Medicare. He's got it all covered. And if you go to uh, the website, usabg.com slash D-M-O-A-K, you can get your free quote today. So huge to have someone local and accessible. Drew is both of those. Again, call him 601-953-8449. All right, David. So yeah, my, my, my last point, maybe this is the most important, um, is the salary. Uh, Mike Bianco, I believe, is is a top five paid college baseball coach right now. Um, and it's not a top five program right now. No, and that's like, the, what's the ROI here? I, I know right. he just won a title. He's won a ton of games, 900 games at Ole Miss, over a thousand in his career. You know, he's, I believe... He's chasing Ron Polk now. Um, yeah, he's he's up there. He's been there a minute. I, I think the most important thing that you have mentioned is that Ole Miss is the envy of the college baseball world as far as its fan base, what it's done with its stadium. Like, there are maybe, what, maybe five to ten programs that are even in the stratosphere, even, in, even among SEC teams, like, you know, LSU, obviously, Mississippi State does a great job with what they do in Starkville. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I mean, Ole Miss Arkansas. is the envy. Yeah, yeah. And there's, you know, Texas A&M polls real well. I'm not, I'm not knocking any other program. I'm just, if you are Ole Miss and you're Keith Carter, I wouldn't trade my position with my baseball program, just generally what you've built. I wouldn't trade that for maybe a couple other schools in the country, if any, you know, maybe one or two. So yeah. what is the best way to maintain that? And you're in a tough spot right now, but I think I, I think you try to if if Mike wants to do it, I, I think that the the best option at this point, the most likely scenario for a relatively quick turnaround is Mike coming back for another year. I'm not saying it's gonna happen. I just I've got 24 years of evidence with Mike and he the teams aren't bad for long. And I like I said, I thought there was marginal improvement this year they obviously not even close to where they want to be but they were much more competitive um i i I keep coming back to i think he gets one more year yeah but it's it's tough it's it's if they made a change i would understand the the arguments against it too yeah i it's you know i was talking with a former player earlier this year um about some of the newer, you know, Kentucky was in the top five pretty much all season. Um, Tennessee's you know, way better than they used to be. You know, they they were in the doldrums for a long time. But, yeah, there's not many programs in the SEC right now. And and now you got Oklahoma and Texas coming in. You're also yeah. usually pretty good at baseball, too. It, it doesn't get any easier. Um, but yeah, it's still, just the- – it's just the arms race in the conference where risking setting yourself back more one to two more years and just playing catch up. And then, you know, you got to go hire the right guy. Are you going to be in a spot? And I know money is a huge part of it and no one's going to say, well, Ole Miss was bad for four years. 
there's no way to turn it around. I know that, but it's just a it's just risky to you know all of these years, these decades of goodwill and the benefit of the doubt, and then just falling flat and just it's just risky. Now, yeah, no, I there's risk on either way on this one, Keith. This is one of Keith Carter's harder decisions, and yeah. I, I mean he's. He's dealt with it, you know, before they won the title, he was dealing with that as well. So, you know, the Mike Bianco saga is fascinating. I mean, how many years have we had this discussion? I mean, I like I, I was talking about this with him in 2010, 2011, 20, you know, I mean, yeah. and then in 2014, like you said, they made the World Series. That quieted it down for a little bit. But then within a couple of years, again, it's just like, well, was that the high watermark? What are we doing here? And, and again, like, I, I just, I guess I don't think, I understand what you're saying about the brand of the program. You don't want it to fall too far. But I, I don't see, you know, if they have one more mediocre season, I, I don't think that's a huge difference in the overarching. I don't think you're just going to suddenly lose much more than you already have. So, yeah, I don't know. It's it's interesting. Uh, it'll be something to follow. I don't know how long it'll be something to follow. Uh, Keith Carter, I imagine, is probably meeting with Mike Bianco at some point today or tomorrow um, to have an end of the year meeting. That's something that's always done. Um, so we'll see. I I think he'll be back. Um, and then, hey, it, it, you talk about putting feet to the fire. 2025 is going to be a huge, huge year for Mike Bianco and and trying to turn this around as Ole Miss misses the tournament second year in a row. Um, not great, but uh, one thing that is great, David, is omspirit.com. If you're not a member, one dollar, join the conversation, the message board. We've got transfer portal coverage. Wall to wall, basketball, football, women's hoops. Uh, and then, hey, we're about to fire up the hype machine for football as the uh, season will be here before you know it, as we are almost through May. Don't know where it went. Zach Berry, master of segways. <laughs> um, but yeah, we will uh, look, we have no choice now. It's no more baseball. So, got to, got to fire up football. Um, media days in July, it'll, it'll, it'll It'll be here before we know it. Close your eyes. So um, appreciate David as always joining the show. Um, and I guess real quick, uh, what's uh, what 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 have you been up to out in Phoenix? What's uh, is it just a lot of D backs right now? I, I know the yeah, Suns a lot of Diamondbacks yeah. going on. Actually, I'm headed over to the uh, the Suns right now. Here in about an hour, they're announcing a G League team. So heading over there, and then Cardinals have OTAs and stuff like that. Yeah. So. There's always a little something going on. If there is a slow part of the uh, year, this would be it. But uh, it's never. Yeah. The Pac-12 tournament's going on. The The very last event, basically, in Pac-12 history is that's happening right. in Scottsdale right now. I still think that's the – I mean, logically, I guess I understand. But the, 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 the dissolving of the Pac-12 is one of the dumbest things I've ever seen. <laughs> but I still think yeah. in 10 years, everybody's going to be like, hey, wouldn't it be cool – if we had like all the West coast teams together in a conference, you know, the big ones, that would be cool. And somebody be like, yeah, we had that. It was called the pac 12. So <laughs> we'll see how that goes, but it, it really is a shame. Yeah. Marvin Harrison jr. Is being sued. Uh, yeah. Um, Always something. But now, yeah, Marvin Harrison, that's interesting. He's, he's dancing to his own drummer or whatever, you know, he, cause he, you know, he obviously he's got the dad that played in the NFL and he's, you know, kind of charting his own course and, you know, I, I I think he's making some interesting moves. It makes for more work for me, but you know. yeah, Mar Marvin didn't ask me my opinion on it. <laughs> yeah, um, but yeah, we'll uh, we'll talk to David again next week, and uh, we'll have more podcasts for you uh, as it gets closer to the weekend and Memorial Day. Hope everybody has a uh, a great Thursday. Stay safe out there if you're starting your weekend early, and uh, we will talk to y'all again. Appreciate you tuning in to the flagship. For David, I'm Zach. We out of here.